back, guys, to another episode of Hard Reads. It has been a bit. You know what I'm saying? We was out here. Uh, well, enjoying life. It was Christmas, and then it was New Year's. So this is our first episode of 2020, guys. How are hey. you guys feeling? I'm Chicken you know, Breezy. We got Bam here, and we got Aussie here. Uh, you know, Bam, what's going on, man? What's up, Bam? Yeah, I'm doing well. Life is nice, as you can see, in my uh, lovely new office. I dig it. Yeah, you, got, you, you got your stream set up back there, too? Yeah, I got my stream set up, dude. Hey, man, this car is like what? This car is like a week old. So it's doing his job. Automobile. Like, okay. Yes. Optimal. That, that Red Bull paycheck coming in. And yep. Out. Yep. Absolutely, man. But yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> we're, we're, we're very happy that you could still make it. We had Bam on as a guest, and I guess the office is a little too uh, big and or a little too, uh, you know, loud. So, you know, he made it work. Man got into the car and said, you know what? I'm still going to be part of the show. So here we are, man. <laughs> Uh, up first, though, as I said, guys, we have two top, real, real big topics to talk about. One would be just a, bit, a series of tweets that I made a couple days ago, and the other one, which we we'll probably talk about first because it's probably easier to talk about, is let's make big. Did you let's make make uh, big moves, Austin? Yeah, I was there. Okay, so let's make big moves, Austin. How was it? It was a good event. It was at the same hotel as Defend the North uh, back oh. in the summer. And Defend the North got a lot of flack for having, like, just kind of being run piss poor. But that was the fighting game side. Like, the Smash side was actually run very well. So people were really excited to go back, and we had more access to the venue. And it was just a really fun event. A lot of people had a lot of good times there. People love the New York scene uh, when they go into, like, compete and stuff. And the event was pretty dope. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did know that the commentary got a little bit of flack online, but you know, that I feel like that happens almost every week. Someone's got to make a comment about it. So a little, boy. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we talk mean? about that? I was fine, I was fine dude. Push that, love, push that love with me, man. I was set. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, it was, it was a little more than a little, but yeah, keep going, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, no, let's talk I about mean, the competition first. How, how did the competition all shake up? I know that Nairo wants a big shout out to Nairo. Uh, I think that was, is this his first S tier, or his second S tier, but it's the first S tier of the season. Yep, it was the first S tier and it went to Nairo. Uh, mm. But what's crazy with it is that everyone thought this was going to be DeBuzz's first. Like, this is going to be his first S tier ever. Because he was fated to win. He got to grand finals, he sent Nairo to losers, he was on winner's side, and he had New York ch uh, chanting behind him. I feel like DeBuzz only gets cheered for in New York City, and it, for obvious reasons, he's from New York, so... Yeah. I, he like levels up when he gets cheered for because he's always, there's people always cheering against him because of this play style. Hey man, you know the crazy part is too is like I was watching I watched most of top eight. Uh, I watched the beginning of top eight. It was Nairo versus Meister, and the crazy part is that Nairo won this game after having to reverse three zero Meister because it was looking real bad for him in those first two games, and then he managed to pull that one out. And I feel like after that, that was just all the confidence confidence he needed to win the tournament. So. You know, could have got seventh and stayed got first. I was scared, bro. <laughs> I, I, I legit <laughs> thought Meister was going to beat him because he, he got me wrong back, back down there. So good for Nairo to bring that all the way back. I mean, that's the that's the loser's run from Nairo, you know? Right. Yeah, man. The classic. Mm -hmm. Other than that, though, we our, our top seven or our top eight all together was Nairo, then DeBuzz, and then third place was uh, Kameme, and then fourth was T, fifth was Mars and MVD, and seventh was Meister and Dark Wizzy. Now, I, I, as I said, I got to watch a decent amount of the matches. Uh, I will say that Dark Wizzy kind of got he kind of got bopped up in this top eight, and uh -huh. so did my uh, MVD to an extent. I mean, he he was actually on the winner side of things, and uh, yeah, he still ended up with fifth place. But he did have to run up against loser bracket Nairo, which kind of sucked. And I I for, I think he had to play Common May in uh, winners. So yeah, he was just kind of like I feel like he had a, a short end of the stick uh, when it came to getting to this top eight or getting into this top eight. But you know, him getting the top eight in itself is already a pretty good uh, feat. You know, a lot of people yeah. have been saying that MVD has been slacking it. Uh, I think he's actually, uh, I feel like he's not even making the PGR uh, this, you know, this you season. Think? No, yeah, there's no way. No, he, I don't he, know, he man. Like, he's got some pretty bad placings, dude. Like, top 50? Like, I, who would be above him? Like, that, like... I, I, I think he's still making top 50. That being said, I, I agree. He, he has not been doing too hot. Not as hot as he was before. Um, I mean, we've seen Snake kind of go on a downcline, right? Like, it's yeah. just like we've seen him on a decline because not many people are really playing him at to that level. You know, you only really have, of course, MVD who's letting it happen. And even him, like, he's a player who hasn't been able to kind of find it this groove as people started you know relearning the snake matchup right it almost felt for a lot of like it was for a time for a new generation to relearn it and once that happened he's been kind of not not he's just not been performing all too well so i'm mm -hmm. glad that he was able to actually do something here um at let's make big moves but uh 
Yeah, it's kind of yeah, crazy. Is still nice. This is S tier and fifth, so it, if yeah. he, yeah, it's going to starting off season three nice. Like, as long as I mean, he yeah, continue sure. to make, I guess, I don't know, top six teams, you know, he's he's slated to have a good spot on the PGR next uh, season already. Bro, he beat Tweak, so, like, <laughs> yeah. that's... That's a good win. That's a really good yeah, one to have. That's for, a very good one. Dude, we have a lot of a uh, lot of zoners, man. <laughs> yeah, but that's definitely a smash a that's... smash zone to mint right now. Like, bro, <laughs> there was a time when oh, I saw Pac Man's on both streams. It was uh, Sinji and T, and yeah. uh, there was a time when they both ended their set at the exact same time. So you saw both Pac Man victory screens on both stream setups. Like in the main office, it's in the crazy. main like it's hall. Like, you know, everyone was talking about how, oh, this game's about to be so aggressive, bro. Like, shields don't work. Oh, and sword characters or whatever. Shields don't work just mean it's harder It's harder to stop zoners from zoning. That's what, that's what the zoners figured out. So. <laughs> yeah, so they're doing their oh, thing. It's, it's funny, man, because you see a lot of these, uh, a lot of things, too, like these zoners. I was talking to people about this, too. Like, their zoning capabilities actually aren't, too like great they're like they're not like you look at some of these other games it, it ain't no soul fist bro like you know what i mean like you ain't you ain't eating that up all day but the, the main thing is a lot of these owners actually have very solid like up close tools like up close boxing tools like why does rob have the best down tilt in the game right like why does like, <laughs> pac-man's like why does pac-man like f tilt's like like actually not as bad anymore. It's like in terms of like just like general dash tech and stuff too. Like the actual has options. Of course, up the B's there. Busted, dude. That the four air is busted. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just freaking combos for days. And that's the kind of interesting thing that kind of happened with Ultimate. A lot of characters just got their whole toolkits reworked in a way that they're usually all, like all in companies, like they're pretty useful. There's mm -hmm. not really a waste of a move. But when you do that for zoners, then it's like your whole goal in terms of getting in on them is like, okay, I got in. Oh, you actually have to fight me not into? Oh, well, well, shit. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. Yeah, man. So, I mean, honestly, I still, I'm still, i still very much enjoying the game. I'm not enjoying it as much online, but I can definitely see how, like, Who is? as you get further and further into tournament, like, you, you have to have... This game is one of those games that definitely requires you to have mental stamina because, like, the potential to play, like, three zoners in a row is very high right now. Like, you could play a Richter, now you can play a Pac-Man, and then you can play a Rob. And you just gotta be, gotta be ready to have some sets ready. You know, and none of that, none of that, oh, me and you and my sword are gonna be running at each other. Nah, that's dead, bro. Now it's just gonna be me, you, and all, all 18 of my items. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just I don't know, man. It's rough I out had, here. I had nothing but like Roy Dittos in my commentary block, so I was set. Oh, oh that's the greatest, dude. Like yeah, honestly, I, just... <laughs> I, I miss playing sword characters only. Like people can talk about how they didn't want Fire Emblem characters. Get the heck out of here, bro. I will bro, take a Fire wall. Emblem bracket any day. Any day no, of the week, honestly, I'll be there. I want that. Except, give, me, give me DLC Fighter 5, just another Fire Emblem character. I don't care how mad everybody's going to be. I just don't want a zoner, bro. <laughs> just don't. No more zoners, man. Like. Yeah, I mean, we thought we thought we was gonna get a brawler within uh within banjo. No, zoner. <laughs> oh, dude, I knew, man. The moment I saw banjo, I'm like, oh, you. It's a collectathon. You trust me. You don't. You don't want to play this character. You don't want to play this character. You don't want to play against this character. We got Terry. Oh hell yeah, I love Terry. I've been Terry's playing him all day. Yeah, yo, the yeah. goon from Southtown. About I'm about it all day. I feel like yo, I, I don't even know why I, didn't, I forgot about Terry because I feel like you know he's getting some decent representation. A lot of the uh, mm -hmm. the Kim players have been trying to like mess around with some Terry and stuff. So, but also at the same time, Terry hasn't like came out and won anything or like made like a super crazy upset. So I feel like he's kind of mm -hmm. falling by the wayside. People are still out here saying that Ken's nice. Uh, you know, Terry's definitely uh, is not as flashy as Ken either, or not as uh, combo heavy as Ken. You know, he has this like two three hits and he gets big damage, so it works. But I, I just think that he's kind of being uh, outclassed by the rest of the DLC right now because of how uh, annoying they can be, I guess, in comparison to what Terry can do. Well, when you think about, like, DLC, like, the DLC power, like, that was, like, Smash 4, because in this game we have Joker and, like, yeah. that's it. <laughs> you got Hero, Banjo, like, they're not really doing anything. Yeah, really I, I do think Banjo is a lot better than people let on. I do think right now we just Agreed. don't have uh, a lot of people playing him at that level. Of course, we had Tweak who's playing with him a bit. Um, but even then, I don't think Tweak has been fully, has fully realized the character as of yet. Uh, I mean, Tweak's so, even talking about trying to play some, some Joker. So, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. You see yeah, the light, dude. Honestly, majority of the yeah, majority of the DLC aren't as powerful in comparison. Um, so it's actually very interesting to see that. So, yeah. 
So, I mean, let's make moves. Uh, all the, well, one super big shout-out to uh, Max and uh, T.O. Joe. I know I said that on Twitter, but I need to say it again. They they really put on. Because let's make, let's make moves, even though it was, like, a good tournament. I wasn't really, like, interested in going to it, uh, you know, as let's make moves. But let's make big moves. I was, like, actually super interested in going to. I just, uh, it was, like, the time period of it, honestly, was the only reason I didn't really go. Because I was, like, I, I really, really haven't had a break. It's the first... Uh, you know, it's the first weekend of the year. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break. Uh, but if it wasn't for that, I definitely wouldn't want to let's make big moves. Yeah, it yeah, was man. Liddy. And people are really excited for the next one. It's good. I, I I told Max you should call it let's make big, big moves, you know. Get that second big in there. Yeah, high level. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Dude, shout outs to House of Three Thousand, man. Can we talk about those guys though? Those guys have been <sighs> killing it since day one. And I'm happy oh, they got their time <laughs> to shine there, able to run the stream. Shout out to Devin, man. Like, he's always done such great work. He's, like, one of the best coders, like, in the community, too. Like, so, like, just the way he handles the stream and where he does stuff is absolutely incredible. And I think that's a big thing for us because I think we do need to push a lot more people like that further and out there in the space where they can be acknowledged for all the work they've done. So, of course, like, shout-outs to Max, shout-outs to T.O. Joe. But, man, shout-outs to freaking House of 3K and what they do and what they've been doing in New York for a very, very long time. And for them that end up actually, you know, running that that mainstream and stuff too, that just goes to all that work they've been doing there, grinding it out in this small, dingy little venue, and made it work. So, congrats New to York, them, man. New York would not be the same without them. And my favorite thing that they implemented in this tournament, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw it, but like at the beginning of Blocks, the intro would like show a, like a shot of New York City and show the hotel, I and then that. you and then you you would talk over it. It's it felt so cool to talk over. Yeah, it, man, it was a big blast. Bro. What do you mean? Yes, I. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did that though. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. But they, they, had, they had opens, they had opens, right? They had all that act, and they did they did cold opens too, which was awesome um, because again, we don't yeah. nearly as much in Smash. So yeah, yeah. But again, like he is someone that if you if you allow him to do, like he he would have been doing that stuff all like a long time ago, right? There's a little, so many things that he's done that's ahead of the curve. Uh, even in terms of just his getting his uh, matches uploaded and stuff too, yeah. you know, and his little like, um, well, like he made for that. So I think yeah, absolutely the incredible. Got to remember is that there's like a lot of there's a lot of people who are like making strides in the streaming uh space that are not yeah. just you know two GD and not just Gimmer and not just you know like uh you know Leva or whatever. Like there's a decent amount of people out there that are making. Uh, is that a, was that a is that a Red Bull show? What was that, man? No, dude, I'm dog <laughs> drinking, bro. Come on, man. Dude, <laughs> do, I tell, come, do you have it on my name? Do you, I didn't ask for anything. I'm just oh, drinking, man. man. Come on. Okay. I didn't know there was going to be a sponsor, read, man. Oh, God. Anyway, there bro, we uh, go. All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Red Bull, baby. He's in, he's in like a Red Bull truck, too. Like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you want from me? Oh, man. All right. So, anyway, let's get into our other topic, which has been uh, obviously the same topic that comes up every fucking year uh smash commentary you know because everyone knows how to do our jobs except for us uh, apparently so yep. uh i made a whole thread there was a, a guy from uh florida named down air who had uh who had tweeted bro why is smash ultimate the only esports where commentary has your idea what a top player does and he played now i wasn't on commentary so this does not apply to me i know for a fact i know what the fuck i'm talking about uh because i spend so much time like you know playing the game and like if i don't know something i'll actually just like all this time that I'm spending not streaming, I'm just learning other fighting games plus uh, refreshing Smash. I got like a whole notebook, all that good stuff. Regardless, I uh, do, I will agree that uh, a lot of Smash commentators do not do the research, but there is no incentive for them to do said research. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a hobby for us. Like, we just, it's a bunch of dudes who like to get on the mic and just kind of have fun and talk about a game that they love. So, you get a lot of guys like that because people aren't getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, th this, there is no circuit. There is no career in that. So you just, uh, it's basically just one of those situations. This is why, this is one of the only games where you can go to a tournament for your first time and get on the mic. Like, you go to a local, no one's on the mic. You could be like, hey, man, I want to sit down. You could not do that in League. You cannot do that in TFT. You cannot do that in Overwatch, you know? So you're going to have a lot of people who obviously don't know the finer workings of commentary getting on uh, to commentate. And, like, as much as that sucks, it's the fact that we don't have means to not do that. So you might as well just, you know, roll with the punches. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, I, <laughs> what else are you going to do? Like, we can't force people or we can't tell people not to commentate at locals. Yeah. Or we can't tell people not to commentate at regionals if the actual commentators like me, you, Aussie, D1, EE are not there because then you're just not going to, you're going to have an empty stream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, absolutely. And it's know. like, it is, it's another thing too where you have, for example, there's not enough people also in their areas that are due do diligence to like help these up and coming commentators as well. I mean, I know you guys have done your part and stuff too, but I think there's a lot of other people where they're like, all right, you know what? I want to hold down the fort for me, myself and my region and all those other cats. Like, nah, I don't want them to have my spotlight. And so you have the issue where you run into in tandem with a lot of these organizers who are not willing to pay. You're going to, yeah, like it's no surprise that you're going to have a, like uh, up until top eight, you're going to have these guys who don't know a, a damn thing. And that to, to me, it's just crazy that so many people are surprised about that when it's like, and it's, and it's a new game, right? We're yeah. still a year into the game, right? Yeah. With a, I, but, a game but, that has, this game actually has a lot of viable ultimate, characters too. I mean, it has a lot off of ultimate though. So, I mean, of, of four though. So like you can kind of get away with not doing Smash 4 commentary, but at least like rehashing a little bit of Smash 4 of course. Uh, knowledge. However, even with that, that's only like, I don't know, 30% of the game. You still have so much more to learn just off mm -hmm. of uh, that. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's it's a crazy thing, man. Uh, so many people every time always want to tell these commentators and they're not looking like, as you said, they don't look at the logistics, right? They don't look at what people have to do or what they give up for the time required to do the craft, right? They don't understand how a lot of people have to do this as a hobby because right now we don't have sustainability in the scene. And that's something that goes top down, right? That is a huge issue that we're still trying to fight. Uh, many of us are trying to fight. And it's the three that the fact of the matter is that, again, since a lot of times where where we actually get our money from and where sponsors are, a big thing is really about the top eights. A lot of times there's going to be a lot of organizers. They skimp out on commentary. It's the first thing for them to go. It's like, dude, hey, you're Joe 152. Hey, have you ever held a game controller? No, uh, that's OK. You look kind of cool. Get out of the mic. You can say what you got to say. Right. Go ahead. And people just love to go like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Why are you so shocked? <laughs> Why are you so shocked for a scene that has so many events, has so many things, right, going on, and there's no sustainability or no money in there? And these, like, you got to start looking at these organizers, right? And it's, I'm tired of hearing this thing that, okay, just because Joe123 went on, like, Joe123 and TK are not the same. Like, get that correct. Stop saying commentators or something right understand that's hey you know what they what these guys need to do these organizers need to hire comment you don't take these guys and be like these guys must be the creme de la creme what the hell is going on like that's stupid like yeah. don't be dumb <laughs> uh, at this point you should know you put this like there's so many people i saw on the screen for the first time in my life and i know it was the same thing for those people but for some reason they're like you know what they are the official representatives of commentary worldwide that is stupid it's dumb. I, I did. I did see a lot of new faces at Let's Make Big Moves, so yeah, I don't. Mm -hmm. And that's I okay. I didn't think right? about that. Yeah, yeah it is okay. it's like it's yeah. okay. It's okay for them to learn and their process and things. But you, you are like for someone to just assume that is the status quo is ridiculous. I, I think that's just ridiculous. You know. Yeah. So well, you got to remember, people actually think that commentators are loaded. You know, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're getting flown out to tournaments. You know, I mean, by the yeah, helicopter every hour though but like it took a long time to do that like yeah you know i mean uh, but it's like what how many people are really getting flown out the tournaments yeah it's not even yes yeah, it's, right? it's, it's basically like four of us the rest of yeah. us yeah. the rest of them have to you know make their own way they have to get in these mm -hmm. carpools they have to buy their own way find the cheap flights and you know hope that they don't go negative going to the tournament but like yeah the 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 all-stars of the smash community will be getting you know flown out whatever however yeah getting flown out does not mean i'm getting paid uh a hefty amount. Sometimes I get flown out and don't even get paid. Like, uh, like I, I've done a, a decent amount of TGG uh, tournaments for free. Like, he just, hey, if you get me out there, I'll, I, you know, I'll fucking commentate. And like, I have no issue doing that because one, one champs the homie, but two, you know, you gotta like play to your uh, scene strengths. Like, that is a very grassroots organization. TGG is a very grassroots organization. Now, would I go about going to? Thunder Studios for free? Hell no. Like, I know you guys got money. Let's not, let's not play no games here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but for the betterment of the community, and just because I also, I really like commentating, I will take some hits just to go out if you'll get me out there. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, it's tough when it becomes yeah. like when you have to go negative to work, which is, you know, wh what it's like in the beginning when you're starting yeah. off your career. Like I, I did that a lot between I'm sure TK, you've probably done that even a lot more longer than I have. Did what? Like, yeah, I, I, I go negative to work. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was that was all when I quit my job. Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's what the savings went to was, <laughs> was getting myself out there. Same. So that, <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever gone positive for an event that's been outside of SoCal. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh wow, that shocks me. Ever. Wow. Yes, yeah, ever. But, but uh, let me go ahead and go through this thread so I can like we can because we got like about six, seven minutes left. So the thread starts with you know someone says, "Bro, why is ultimate blah blah?" blah. I rent. I said short answer: poverty game, which is still true. We don't have that money. We don't have the resources. But the long answer is why we don't have the resources. So as I said, most commentators doing this as a hobby. There's no such thing as a solo smash commentary career, uh, except for you know maybe me, D1, and EE. Uh, and even then, it's not a solo. Like, I don't just make all of my, like, cash from commentary. Like, I, you know, I'm doing this. I do, I stream. I do other games. Like, it, it's all a package. You know what I'm saying? It's a package revenue. So, uh, I don't have the time, really, to devote to a Smash like that. And anyone who does have the time to devote Smash like that is usually doing it as a super, super huge passion. Um, so that was, that's number one. It's also possible that most people who are watching Smash are those passionate people that I'm talking about who only study Smash. You know, you only know everything about this game because you spend 100% of your time on this game. And mm -hmm. that's great. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a Smash scholar, you know, then do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's fine. Like, if that's what you want to do with your life. However, being a Smash scholar does not automatically make you better at commentary or a good commentator because a commentator has to know more than just about the game. You need to know about the production side of thing. You need to know how to shill. You need to know how to sit on camera. You need to know how to uh, speak clearly and fluently so that people can understand what you're, the point you're trying to get across and that it makes sense to more than just the other hardcore, uh, hardcore Smash you know, scholars. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest disconnects is that all these like mid-level players who feel like they know so much about the game want to like hear everything they like they want to fact check you pretty much the entire time they just want to sit there and tell you mm -hmm. what you said wrong what you said right or uh how you didn't delve deep into this little interaction when honestly you don't have the time at the time if, if some crazy interaction happens on the right side of the stage in 10 seconds a crazy interaction can happen on the left side of the stage and i don't have the time to continue to talk about what's going on over here when something crazy yeah. could happen over here right now you know what i'm saying so i just i don't know man people <laughs> I'll keep going, but I don't know if you have any in, in, inserts on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, and I want to go to that because obviously, you know me, like, I kind of come into commentary from, like, I'm an analyst. Like, I have coached some people in SoCal and stuff, too. So I'm really big on finding all the data and on doing all that stuff all the time, too. And something that always bothers me about people who probably, a lot of them at times, they share my, like, same, like, ideas of, like, oh, they love to break down the game in super detailed ways, this and that and the third and whatever, right? The thing is, you need to understand that if, like you said, if you're going to be a Smash scholar or Smash enthusiast, right, in that in that capacity, right, in the hardcore sense in the data, guess what? Other people who aren't, you're probably going to know more than them in that capacity, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's like, it would, it would be weird as hell if I'm walking down here and I'm freaking a general practitioner, I'm a doctor, I'm walking down the street and I look at this random lady, right, and she's like, oh, my, you know, my, my arm's hurting. I don't know why. Like, maybe, like, I just need to, uh, you know, maybe I just need to ice it or something. I don't know. And I'm a doctor, and I'm like, oh, you're so stupid. How <laughs> dumb can you be? How do you not know this? <laughs> like, dude, you need to understand that if people are studying this, like, there, no one's going to know what you've gotten through the years and years of research and all the things that you've done. No one's going to get that in just a day. And yeah. people are going to invest their skills and talents in other aspects, yeah. right? And the thing about it is, yes, knowing info information is great, but that is not the end-all, be-all. In fact, that's, that's probably the least important thing because you need to be able to public speak. You need to be able to dictate to people what's going on, what's on screen, why, to a multitude of people. And guess what? For people who are hardcore about the data, unfortunately, we're the minority. There's not going to be as many people there that as to other people who are a casual audience. And you have yeah. to understand that. You can't be like, oh my gosh, like, this is so dumb. How do they not know this? Like, that would just be stupid for a doctor to go to every single person and be like, oh, you're an idiot. You're taking yeah. aspirin? You're about to die right now. How do you not know that? 
Like, yeah. maybe you should just check your life. Like, no, dude. They didn't go to school for that. Wait, do you die in the office and he's like, and he's like, you're like, you're coughing. He's like, yeah, I may be sick. Of course you're sick, you idiot. You got a cold. Don't bring it off. You're still dumb. What are you mad at? You have insurance? You're an idiot. Can you die taking aspirin? Is that a thing? Yeah, you can die doing anything. Well, yeah, well, if you take too much, but like, yeah, what the if it's like a pill, if it's like just one, like uh, I don't take I'm aspirin. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm like, wait, you, so, I am not an aspirin user. Like, you've never taken aspirin? No, I've taken it before, but like very rarely. Okay, well, yes, yeah. you can die. Uh, okay, just like everything else in life. You know, okay, anything <laughs> in abundance. Like you know, you know, overdose saying, or like, something. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm moving on. Um, Damn, Oxy was really sick. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I, 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 I can I, 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 can I die? Can I die? Can I die? answer me? Anyway, move on to the thread. So, uh, as I continue, I said most other esports have real reason revenue as an incentive to be super knowledgeable, be it a circuit, a developer support, and Smash. We're just a bunch of people who are, have a passion for this game, and so I made it work. It's 100% true. This is not a day job for most people. Most commentators you hear, they have a day job. They have no reason to continue to study Smash. There's no promotions mm -hmm. for uh, commentary outside of getting better gigs. And those better gigs don't even mean you're getting paid more. You just may get picked up for an Evo, for a block, mm -hmm. instead of doing your yep. regionals top 16 or something like that. Yeah, so, literally, at Let's yeah. Make Big Moves, I think the only two casters that can even try to qualify it as like a very small, small, small part-time job are like Rod and I. Uh, like Korean's a coach. He he doesn't get paid that much to go on the mic. He just does it because he's there and he's already a coach. So already has the the data. Yeah, then yeah. you have uh, Hazmat and Koopa who are up there. They uh, I, I I can't speak for their income. Maybe they get some as well, but it's very little. Yeah. And everyone else there of like not getting paid, not 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 making that much money. Definitely yeah. just a hobby. And there's nothing wrong with that. that. I mean, like there's definitely nothing wrong. With yeah. That. Yeah, like if you you know you're out there doing Smash commentary as a hobby and you're only getting pools blocks then whatever. But if you once you start complaining about it, that's when I feel like it's an issue because I'm like you're not really like if if you're you know stuck doing pools or whatever, but you're not really doing anything to get yourself out of being just a pools commentator. You're not streaming. You're not commentating. You're not doing analysis. You're not going out of uh, going to anywhere but your weekly and commentate like three matches there. Of course, you're not going to get noticed. You know what I'm saying? That's something I've been telling people for a while. That's my new uh, how do I you know get into commentary. Uh, answer, but I'll get into that even later. Uh, moving on to our next topic, I said number four, our tools are very lacking in comparison to other esports during most tournaments. We don't have uh -huh. sheets, we don't have head to head records, we don't have region info, and even who's coming up next a lot of the time. So it's either off memory or phone search. And that is 100% fair. I've sat in front of uh, a monitor sometimes that is literally just the feed of the stream. Not even the feed of the stream, it's just the feed of the game. Add an S tier. Yeah, Add an S tier. You'll see this yep. commonly. Yep. Yeah. So like, and this is, yeah. it's one of those things like you need to like we don't have all the oh coming up next and oh they've played this time before unless I'm in my phone during the time that the camera's on me or during the time the camera's off me, which you can obviously tell because I haven't talked for like forty seconds. So yeah, there's there's a bunch of stuff that we are missing. Uh huh. Uh. That should be provided for us as commentators from production. And I'm not blaming production. Sometimes you're just not there. Like, not everyone is there. But uh, for a lot of production, they're just not there. And because of that, you just kind of have to roll with the punches. And if the punches do not give you the information, then you just fill with other shit. Yeah. And that's very, very, and that's something that I think that a lot of people just don't realize nearly enough. They think that all of us are sitting down there and like we should have this tome in our heads, which makes no damn sense. And then they also think that we should just know every single little thing that's going on. And the thing about it is like there's so many players, there's so many events going on. You know, we don't even have our our ranking system isn't even updated regularly, right? And you know, just having this data, like barely have any of that data ever. You know, yeah, like we have. Like, thank goodness for people like Osti, like with this like recap and all those kind of things that happen where you have some of that data there. You know, thank goodness that there's sometimes I can connect with someone at PG Stats and say, hey, what's going on? Or I can go off my memory. Or they have some stuff where you can actually go through a site and look for stuff based on uh, a lot of the VODs that are there. But yeah. think about how long that takes, right? We don't have that data all in front of us. When you look at tier one esports, when you look at the general, like, traditional sports in general they have this data they have all this data in front of them at their fingertips people telling them in their ear right teleprompters etc we don't have that yeah yeah we gotta we gotta we gotta make it happen 
Yeah, we usually so if do. We data from them. We got to we learn and we know it because from our experiences. And so yeah, people just need to recognize that. that. I think it's crazy that people think we're at that level. We actually got a crazy amount of commentators in chat. One, but that's what I'm saying in chat, man. A lot of them are pulling stuff from their phone. Flambeezy saying he got smashed uh, data. Gg on his phone at all times. Slept over here talking yeah. about Liquipedia uh, player comparison. You know what I'm saying? Banjo says athletes. Gg is dope. This is all stuff that, as a caster, this is not your your responsibility to come up with. Like, you're you're supposed to just be able to relay whatever information is in front of you, and then talk about the game as uh, it is going on. But because there's no information in front of us. You know, not much to relay. Uh, moving and on. Even, said, even oh, if they did get, sorry, I just one more thing. Even yeah. if they did get the information, it'd probably be just during top eight. So like when you're doing round one pools, like you're not going to have stats on those guys. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to have like head counts or it won't matter. So like. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, that, and that's again, another thing that you're saying, because the truth of the matter is you're looking at FGC, right? You're looking at something where everyone can come in. Everyone can enter the tournament, right? You're not looking at, oh, well, why don't you guys have all the stats on it? Well, I'm sorry. This isn't G2 versus like Phoenix. Like, you know, it's like this is not Cloud9 versus CSM or something along those lines where we have all these data and it's only those pro teams like trust me if we could do it where it's like oh only the top 10 in the world are the ones that we're talking about then you would hear a lot more data then you would have a lot more info because that's so yeah. much that's exponentially easier yeah, yeah i'm sorry i didn't know that it's timmy bone jones 215 and he's at his first tournament with his mom yeah i didn't know who he is he's never he doesn't know who he is he's still trying to learn who he is he just got here to this tournament <laughs> he, he thought this character looks kind of cool this girl Marth, and he's playing that's it so like of course i'm not going to know about this person and all this like and have this information and i like even like i said for myself i pride myself on i think for commentary like one of my strongest suits is knowledge on the game and knowledge on players and like that narrative right that's what i pride myself in and i know how much effort that i have to put in to even do those things and it's like there's no way that everyone's going to be have all the information every single time there is just it's just that's just ridiculous and people need to understand the kind of effort that commentators actually have to put in to make that work and that's yeah. just that's just what we have to do with because it's still grassroots man no matter what you see the big flashing lights all these things we're still grassroots yeah uh well as we i think i had like one more point left in this thing but it was like four tweets and one but it was basically to be honest the smash community never knows what they want uh anyway if you're an analytical yes. commentator you're too boring if you're too hype then you don't know anything about the game the bigger picture is that we aren't just commentating for the Smash community. We're commentating for all viewers, which is 100% true. Uh, which what's led to the other tweet is play-by-play -play becomes necessary to keep those who may have just walked into a Smash stream for the first time to uh, understand, allow them to understand. Channel analysis allows them to understand what's going on on a basic level. You yourself will know all that because you play, obviously, but they do not. Uh, and then I said, you know, obviously, I'm not saying that Smash commentary can't improve because, as I said, I, there's, I don't even like a lot of the commentary that I listen to. And, like, that's, you know... So, but I'm not going to sit here and complain about it on, on Twitter every time someone gets on that I don't like their style or whatever. You just uh, don't say anything and move on with your life. Yeah, just like, all right, well, you know what? I didn't enjoy that <laughs> block. Maybe the next guy will uh, pop off. So, uh, but then my last comparison was because I saw a lot of people trying to like compare this. guy. I hate when people do this. Stop comparing Melee and Ultimate Commentary. Stop comparing Melee and any commentary for in general because Melee is an 18-year-old game. Like almost all their commentators have been playing since like Inception, since their own birth. And uh, of course, they're going to know everything about eight to 10 characters. Yeah, I was going to say, there's like six time. characters. Hello? You know what I'm saying? So, like, whenever <laughs> yeah, people try yeah. to compare it to Melee and, and, and stuff, that annoys the shit out of me. Like, it's insane. I, it's two different games. There's 70 plus characters in this game. There is eight characters that are being played uh, at most in a Melee tournament. Like, yeah. calm down. You know what I'm saying? And also, I'd like to say, dude, and I'm going to keep it a buck, dude. There's, there's some Melee commentaries that are really good, but at large, I don't think melee commentary is. I think ultimate commentary overall is better. We have more people who are actually at a higher level. I honestly believe that. I think there's a lot of melee commentators that are at a top top level and they're super super good, but it drops off like literally like you go to go through like eight people and it just drops significantly. Yeah. And so I think it's just ridiculous sometimes where how people talk about this as well, as if like there's a like. <laughs> there's just like every person who gets on the mic just is a god like, oh, oh I'm, I'm god i'm god i'm god i know all i'm god like no yeah, I know come everything. on man 
Yeah, that's just, that's not even real. And then, like you said, for a six character, eight to ten character, ten characters max game. Like, come on, man. Out of eighteen years, you. I hope you know. I hope you know that matchup. If you don't know it, then then man, school. The schooling system must have failed you because I don't know how <laughs> you just not understand at that point. All right. So like, come on, man. Yeah, I just that was the the biggest thing that was like burning me up. It's like I hate when people say that, and then I hate that. There's another guy, I can't remember who he said, but he was basically like, I hate when when play-by-play commentators are like, you know, just telling me what's going on. Like, that's disrespectful to my eyeballs. First of all, play-by-play is in literally every commentary game ever. Like, a sport, <laughs> just in general. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Sports, uh, games, uh, you know, honestly, you could be commentating uh, a life of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, someone could be walking down the steps, you're commentating, and you're going to say, all right, this guy's going down the steps right now. It's not disrespectful to your eyes. It's just not everyone is watching. And you have to, uh, you, there's always a uh, dead air to fill. So play by play is the perfect area to, uh, or, or perfect place to fill dead air. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, not much going on. Let me just restate what the situation is right now. Six minutes left on a clock, a little bit of a lead here for one of our opponents. You can see one of them stuck on a uh, platform. That is, uh, that's going to happen. Like not everything is going to be a super huge breakdown on every, you know, every interaction. Just cause you jump on the platform. I don't need to express every option or every reason why you jumped on the platform. Just, all right, he's on the platform now. I'll see what he does when he get off. You don't have time to. Yeah, yeah. you just don't have the time. And, <laughs> and so I just, why would you even say that? that makes no, like that to me is so uneducated. It's like, you don't even watch. No, like, you don't watch anything. Don't that watch means anything. you don't yeah. watch sports, <laughs> but you're actually just like, you don't, like you turn on a screen for the first time. Like if you are upset about someone doing play-by-play, literally one of the cornerstones of commentary period, then you're you're actually a clown. You, you don't, you just don't know what you're saying. You just, you're just like, you know what? <laughs> I learned these words today, so I'm going to say them. I'm just going to say them. Like, that's what you want to do because you really, like, how do you, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Is that, yeah. That's just, to me, is so ridiculous. And there's a lot of people that are really exposing themselves sometimes when they start speaking about these things because they really don't understand, like, the, like some of the basic, basic tenets of commentary. Which you know, anyone who's ever watched movie. a sport, whoever like watched anything, whoever has watched like <laughs> freaking like film noir, like anything, would Honestly, understand that this is just like that is the process. That is a basic process. I, but I feel like I, I always want to challenge anyone who ever like makes these tweets like this to like go to your local and get on commentary and then try to do all the things that you have to do outside of the match. Mm-hmm. Like you can be great about talking about what's going on, on the screen, but that doesn't make you. A great commentator you know what i'm saying once you get back to the screen being on you you know you being able to be entertaining for that time that the screen is on you being able to do all the rest of the commentary that in my opinion is what makes you a great commentator you can be great at talking about smash for sure like there's a bunch of people that i think that are greater talking about smash and then i think they're still shitty commentators because they don't know how to do the rest of it you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying like I- I'm, I'm glad that like the source material you know, you and the source material, you know, y'all y'all vibe very well. But as soon as it gets back to this point, me and the camera, and I can't depend on you, you know what I'm saying? To me, you're not a good commentator. Like, mm-hmm. No, and absolutely, man. Absolutely. Because, dude, I remember even for myself, man, when I first was leading the commentary, I was like, hey, I feel like I would love to hear, like, more, like, analysis. And I jumped on the mic, and instantly I was like, you know what? I'm My public speaking in comparison to guys, complete trash. And it's like, if I'm going to get to a level where I can even divulge any of this information in a coherent manner, I got to get better. I got to learn. I got to study the craft. I got to study what they're doing, right? I got to look at all my favorite commentators, right? And then go from there and just be better. And that's the kind of thing that happens. And just a lot of people just love to be, they just love to be couch warriors. Everyone wants to talk about this and that and the third, and they've Apparently, never watched TV in their life. Like these guys have never yeah, seen bro. sports in their probably, life. They probably never been doing in their life. Before. Yeah. Sometimes people get angry, and then you ask them about the information. They're like, "Oh, this guy, he didn't know. Like, how did he not know this was three frames?" And it's so funny. And then it's like you look in the chat, and then someone's like, "No, that's six. He's like, "Oh, well, pff, I don't play the game." Like, yeah, yeah, bitch, shut up! <laughs> why, are you, why are you? Why are you looking for that information? And you don't yeah, know what you're not, you're not in the you're not in the spotlight. You could be yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah, it yeah exactly. Lost it off. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's yeah. Exactly. Oh no, no it's, big deal. No big deal. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. People need to get in a place where it's like, hey, understand that we're grassroots. Understand that can people get better? Of course they can. Of course they can. Right? Yeah. But it's like understand it's grassroots. Understand there's more than meets the eye. Surprise. Life isn't just. What I see in my sole perspective, yeah, big shocker to some people, but that's the reality of the situation. 
and then understand that people are going from there. And then on the other side of the coin, it's like, ultimately, people need to recognize, hey, who's putting these people in this position? I mean, TK, do you make the commentary? Like, do you make the commentary sheet? Are you the one who does it? Are you the one who does it, Austin? No. Look at the organizers and look at the funding and stuff that they have and see right, what's going on. There's clearly a discrepancy between some of these really good casters that are usually doing the top eight and then some of the other people lower line that don't really know so much in that way. Yeah. And so people need to look at it almost as if just as you are doing pools play, it's pools commentary, right? And that is basically what's happening. So you have the top players and you have the top plays, like, like the, top, okay, hey, the top casters casting those things. It's the same concept and for some reason that is surprising to people and they think like for example someone's like oh someone was a pro smash who are you gonna say probably gonna say mk leo probably gonna say tweak like you're not gonna say billy bob thornton too we're not gonna say that because even though they're like and they're competing in the tournament (laughs) (laughs) even though they're playing the tournament right that's like they're not what you consider at that level and that's the same thing that's happening in commentary we have the same kind of ethics there where it's like people join in if you hey you got money that or you got money or you want to sit on the mic Go ahead and sit on the mic. It's the same Yo, as like, no hey, lie, you no got lie, five no bucks, lie, you can go in the tournament. Same thing. No lie, though. I actually really enjoy my Evo pools blocks. Whenever they have me open up the stream, I, th- there is there is no bad. level of joy of watching oh, these awesome. people like who know nothing about this game play. That is like that is like my that's like my top three blocks of the year every Free. year. <laughs> every like, Free. oh yeah, man. So, uh, Yo, we had some good blocks. Dude. In 2017, we had some good blocks, bro. You and I, let's do it. That'd be wild, man. Because... <laughs> that's my thing. I'm like, yeah, man, we yep. top three blocks here. Oh yeah, man, I like Genesis 6. That was cool. Yeah, Evo top eight. But yo, honestly, my first block at Evo, Bro, oh, right. yo, that's kind of flames. Hit. Yo, that that Gannon, I don't even know his name. Like, you know, like <laughs> he did pop. But guys, we got to wrap it up, and it's uh six forty three, so we got to go ahead and head up out of oh. here. Uh, I guess last thing th- uh, thought basically is if you're a commentator, man, you're in, and you the only thing you want to do is just improve, man. Like, don't let the people get uh, get you know get you down. Improve at your own pace. Improve at your own time. Continue to go and do things that will help you improve, but don't kill yourself for it uh, because. You know, like don't don't put yourself in a situation where like you're giving up a bunch to to fuel this hobby. Like at the end of the day, this is still a hobby for a lot of people. You enjoy talking about the game. We enjoy talking about the game. Continue to enjoy talking about the game. Just you know, uh, improve at a pace that every block is better than your last. That's all that matters. Even if it's only one percent better, it still means that you're improving, and that's all that really uh, matters in the grand scheme of again uh, grand scheme of things. So Absolutely. yeah. That was Hard Reads. I'm TK. This is Bam. This is Aussie. And we will catch you guys next week to uh, to shit talk you even more. Later. Peace.